this week's Drop 5. My name is Kurt. You know, my basketball career really ended in 8th grade. I don't know if you could actually call it a career when it ends in 8th grade, but hey, I gave it a go. And growing up in Indiana, I've said this multiple times, but playing basketball was really the goal and the dream for every young kid. Now, there was a major problem with me playing basketball, and that was that my best friend played the same position. We were both point guards, and he was just clearly better than me. I could dribble, and I played good defense, but never really got the jump shot and was a little bit out of control, for being honest. But, you know, one of the things that's a challenge is that when you really have a dream or you really want to play basketball – and you have to sit on the bench, a lot starts to happen to you. If you've ever sat on a bench in sports, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you start to get jealous or maybe embarrassed or you start to question your skills or you start to say, what's even the point of this? And you know, one of the things is that I think in sometimes many of us can feel like we are just sitting on the bench when it comes to the kingdom. We can say, hey, it's up to the church staff or to the pastors or to people who have the skills to evangelize or people who have the skills to go out and help the homeless or those who have the skill to be up on the worship team. And I'm just going to kind of sit on the bench and let those people do the work of the kingdom. But here's the problem is that when we start to think that way, when we start to get in that kind of bench sitting mentality, that's not how the kingdom works. That's not how Jesus set up the kingdom. And so we can sit here and we can say, man, I'll let somebody else do that. Or, hey, when I'm good enough. Or, hey, when I have the right words to say, I'll start doing stuff for the kingdom. But that's not how it works. You know, Romans 10, I read this in the sermon uh, a couple weeks back. But Romans 10 says this, How then will they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear about him without one who preaches to them? What it's saying here is that we all play a part in the kingdom. You know, John Wimber is one of my favorite theologians, and he has a book called Power Evangelism. And in Power Evangelism, he has this great line where he says, everyone plays a part. When it comes to evangelism, when it comes to preaching the gospel, when it comes to sharing the gospel with people who desperately need it, we all play a part. There is no bench sitters when it comes to the kingdom. And so here's my challenge to end the drop five. My challenge is for you this week to really spend time in prayer. And I want you to ask God for two things. I want you to ask for the Holy Spirit to reveal in you someone or some people that he may be wanting you to reach out to, that he may be wanting you to share the gospel with. It's a scary prayer. I totally understand it. I think many of us sitting on the bench, maybe we can feel like I did in eighth grade where you start to question your skills, where you start to question, could I even do that? But the best way to get off the bench is to go out and do the work because everyone plays a part in the kingdom. So I want you to be praying for the people. Now, here's the deal. I then want you to start praying for opportunities, natural opportunities for you to be able to share the love of Christ with them. Because what it says here is it says, how will they believe about whom they have not heard? And how will they hear if not one of us goes out and preaches? Now, I said this in the sermon, but it can't just be the church staff. It can't just be the people that have the skills. It can't just be the people who go out and uh, feel a call to evangelism. We are all called to play a part in preaching the good news to people who desperately need it. And I promise you, that as we do that, we will begin to see the kingdom advance in our own lives, in our family, our friends, in our neighborhoods. And I know that's the desire of of our church. I know that's the desire of our church staff is just to say, hey, family, we are all playing a part in the kingdom. This is not a matter of certain people in the church do this and certain people in the church don't. And it will change everything about your walk when you start to understand that you play a part in the kingdom.